people started to get better. And thus, LifeWorks Wellness Center was born. I transitioned out of the emergency room. This was so interesting. Right. I was just learning all the time mm. that while regular medical practice, if you have an emergency, you know, mm. you get hit by a car or you get shot yeah. or you're having a heart attack, that these things are wonderful and they really help people. Uh, but for virtually all the chronic diseases that people have, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmune disease, Alzheimer's, you know, MS, mm -hmm. it's virtually worthless because none of the treatments actually target what's wrong. All of the treatments, while they may benefit people from a symptomatic right. point yeah. a little bit, they don't really handle that person wasn't born with that disease. Mm -hmm. That person didn't have that disease five years before. Now they've got this disease and all the treatment is designed to suppress the immune system or help them with pain, which is fine. But it never actually is directed at why did this happen in the first place? Like, why is this body acting this way? Why does a person have chronic fatigue or fibromyalgia mm. or any of these things? Mm -hmm. And so what I started to understand is that if you orient someone toward why did you get this? What, is the, what are the underlying factors? Mm -hmm. That you can sort of unwind those things. There are toxicities, which is part of it. Yes. Their infections, which is part of it, and the deficiencies of nutrients that they have, which is the third part of it. If you can fix those two things, like get out of them the things that are in there that shouldn't be, yeah. and get in them the things that should be. Yeah. So they have a zinc deficiency or a selenium deficiency or an essential fatty acid deficiency mm. or an amino acid deficiency. You can resupply that stuff. Mm -hmm. And they have... Lyme bacteria, or they have mononucleosis virus, or they mm. have parasites, or they have these all these things. Yeah. Well, you get those out, and you supply the things that they need, and the body, the innate intelligence of the Knows body, what to do. will know what to do, <laughs> and it will handle it. Wow. And unless they're really sort of, you know, dangling by a thread and mm -hmm. off the edge, you may not be able to. You know, you can't save everybody. Right. But a lot of people, we, in our practice, about 85% of the time, the average person has seen 13 doctors with not a good diagnosis and not a successful treatment, that we can, we can successfully get them back to feeling well and going back into their life and off all of their medicines and really doing well. And it's, it's very simple, really, but re that's the approach that we mm. use. And so we do a lot of testing on people. We, have a, you know, we do a lot of different kinds of treatments on people that most people never heard of. Right. They're very safe, and they really work. So that's how I got into this thing. What prompted you to write this book? Well, let me just say one more thing about yeah. this. Is the average nutritionist, mm. uh, medical nutritionist, medical doctor, doesn't know this either. Mm. I didn't know this either. Yeah. Uh, I learned this material from some a really smart guy, yeah. and um, I w I was a guest lecturer at the annual meeting for the American College of Nutrition a few years ago, and I presented the data that's in the book to the to the now these are PhD nutritionists mm -hmm. or registered dietitians or medical doctors who are interested in the nutrition industry, and these people after 45 or 50 minutes that I talked sat there in silence with their mouths open. Mm. And after everybody sort of came to, the question <laughs> was, how come we never heard this before? Yeah, exactly. And in the book, I make a statement that if you read this book and you understand it, it's written really in lay terms. It's yes, not written it's a very easy, I don't mean easy, re like it's, it's easily digested information. Right. Yeah. That you will know more than your doctor or your nutritionist, I am sure, mm -hmm. about protein and protein metabolism and what the role of proteins is in the body and how much do you need and how should you take it. Because this is not taught in medical school, mm -mm. and the the amount of information, the the sort of false information that's sort of passed off as good dietary science or nutritional science just isn't true at all. Yeah, you know, scary. like now it's scary. Uh, whether you look at whey protein or you look at collagen now is the mm -hmm. rage of the rage. Yes. These things are not good proteins, mm. and, um, and it's not that they're bad foods, right? Or that they don't taste good. Yeah. But if the reason you eat a protein is so that your body can then 
make its own proteins, mm-hmm. they're not very good at it. Mm-hmm. In fact, they're darn poor at it. Right. You know, the best thing you can do for real protein is either get a hold of some breast milk, mm-hmm. which is hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or eat whole eggs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And chicken and fish are good seconds. Yes. Uh, but all the plant proteins, the collagen proteins, the whey proteins, the bean proteins, the pea proteins, they're really inferior proteins. And mm. most of the one, most of what you eat of them never becomes a protein in your body. It gets turned into a carbohydrate and it's just calories. Yeah. So for your book, The Search for the Pro- Perfect Protein, I want you to talk about what that perfect protein is, protein is and how does that tie into everything that you're talking about and telling us. Okay. <laughs> so I actually got into this because my hobby is Ironman triathlons. Right. I read about that. <laughs> so I work out a lot and um, I started doing my first Ironman. It was in 1982. And so I'm always trying to, you know, I like to compete and I like to do better and I'm aging, but I, you know, I want to be as good as I can get. Mm-hmm. And uh, about 12 years ago, I was doing a track workout, um, and I pulled my hamstring pretty bad, mm. and I could not get it to heal. I massaged it, I injected it, I chiropractored it, I acupunctured it. I have access to everything, and I did everything. But I found that if I started to push it, I would feel it, and I knew that if I pushed it, I would tear it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. And then I ran into a friend of mine who said that he'd been in Europe, and he'd gotten these amino acid tablets there, and that I should try these out and see if they would help me. Mm -hmm. So I did. And I found that in about six weeks, now I was mostly a vegetarian at that point, I had been for about 30 years. Mm -hmm. I would eat eggs, some dairy products, but I really wasn't eating any meat. And I really thought I had a good diet, and I was very fit. Um, And But after about six weeks on these amino acid tablets, my hamstring felt strong. Mm. I remember going to the track. I'm going to push it today. I'm going to see what happens. And I pushed it, and it was fine. Hmm. Okay. So, like, these are pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then I, I keep track of my VO2 max and my maximum heart rate because I train with a heart rate monitor. And I found that my maximum heart rate had gone up in that period of time about 12 points, which is a lot. And, um, and I gained about 12 pounds but you couldn't see any difference in the way my body looked. And I asked the source of these amino acids what it was happening, and he Mm -hmm. said, well, you've been malnourished, subclinically malnourished, Mm -hmm. like nothing obvious, right? for a long time with your vegetarian diet, Mm -hmm. and your bones, your organs are filling in the Ah. proteins that should have been there that weren't. And that's where the weight is from. My waist was the same. My, you know, I, you could not tell the difference. So then I did Iron, I did, I had done Ironman Canada many times and I went back and raced and I had my, I had my best time ever. And so I wrote an article for Triathlete Magazine on maybe you're, you're protein malnourished and you don't know it just like I was. Mm -hmm. And here's what happened to me. And after I wrote the article, 3,000 people wrote, like, where do we get this stuff? Oh, well, <laughs> so you're so, on to something. Yeah. Yeah. So we... In terms of, because there's something you said that made me think, well, geez, there's got to be an impact here on the obesity epidemic and weight. And, you know, if, if this stuff, if it can't be gotten rid of and it's sitting there as waste, what's the impact on not getting proper amounts of the proper amino acids, what's the impact on weight? Because that's, I mean, not to discount all the other things you've talked about, but weight gain, losing weight, I mean, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. So there has to be some connection here. One of the theories of weight gain is that the body isn't able to get rid of the waste that's coming in. 
you know, the chemicals, pesticides, plastics, comes from, you know, cosmetics and bad food and bad water right. and bad air. And the body's detox system has a certain ability to get the stuff out, okay? Yeah. But if it can't get it out, what's it going to do? It's got to put it places where it's going to try to be not on the main, you know, it's not going to get in your heart. It's not going to get in your brain because that would cause major disturbances. And that I've seen lots of very obese people who hardly eat at all. Mm -hmm. And they're really heavy. Yeah. And I think that their bodies just decided we need a lot of storage for toxic stuff. Mm. Right. And we're going to just add fat stores because a lot of these fat, a lot of these toxins are fat soluble. Yeah. They will go into the fats and it's a place. It's where a happy they can store place for them. It's a happy place for them. And one of the precautions when you detox people who are yeah. very heavy or when you, when you, whether you fast them or you do something else yeah. with them is they are dumping massive amounts yes. of yeah. chemicals, pesticides, yeah. toxins, all kinds of stuff. Yikes. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. So just and the, let me just say one mm -hmm. more thing. So in my practice, one of the things that we do is we test serum amino acid levels on everyone that comes mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. Now, most of the people we're seeing have chronic illness. Yes. Virtually 100% of them have very low levels of essential amino acids. Mm -hmm. Now, that means that their immune system and their detox system and their enzyme pathways yes. are going to be insufficient. Mm -hmm. So they can't deal with this stuff. I've also worked with a, quite a few really high-end athletes, mm -hmm. and they have less of this but I tell you, when you get their serum amino acid levels, and I'm not focusing this as the only thing, because they may have vitamin deficiencies or essential fat deficiencies, right. you know, other things. Yeah. Because we're usually doing everything at the same time. But the one that everybody's been ignoring really has been amino acids, is that if you get their amino acids optimized, they get their, you know, they get their world champions. You know, wow. they then... Yeah. That's the hundredth of a second. That yeah, that that's the two the degree difference. shift. <laughs> that's right. Wow, well that's that right. oh, that's exciting. I mean